Hi, here we are on 8.6 systems of nonlinear equations. And this is kind of like the 8.1 section, except they're not just lines. These can be lines, but they could also be circles with parabolas. You could actually try to figure out the point of intersections with, uh, with ellipses and circles. Because you, so as you can tell, you can have up to four um, like in that case. And sometimes you're not even going to know what type of an equation you're dealing with. Uh, some of you will be able to say, okay, this one's a line. And some of you will say, well, okay, this one's a circle. So you'll know kind of how many solutions you're going to have. Now, I've got an example back here uh, that I'm not even sure what kind of a graph it makes out, but just by, just by looking at it, I have a suspicion it's kind of like a, a tilted ellipse. But you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But my point is, sometimes you don't know what kind of graph you're dealing with, so you don't know how many solutions you could have. So you just sometimes you just got to check them to make sure they work. Uh, you know, so I've got this circle and this parabola up here. So you have up to four solutions, but you can maneuver this parabola somewhere so they may not intersect at all. So you may not have any solutions. So uh, if you have a line and a parabola, if you bring the line down below the parabola, you may not have any points of intersection. You may have a line tangent to the parabola. In that case, you have only one point of intersection. Or what I have on the ground on the board up here, you can have up to two solutions. So the thing about this is you have sometimes, like I said, you don't know how many solutions you're going to have up front. So the good news is how to solve these types of problems are almost exactly the same way we solve problems in 8.1. We can either do it by substitution or elimination. Sometimes the elimination method doesn't work very well, and sometimes the substitution method doesn't work very well. So it's kind of to your advantage of knowing both ways to do it. So if one doesn't work out for you, you can revert back to the other technique. So, all righty. So my first example is y equals the square root of x, and most of you guys have probably remember that one. It's the square root graph. So it's kind of like that, like a little arc, like this. And then six minus x is of course a line, it has a negative one slope with a y-intercept of six. You don't have to graph them to see what's happening here. But what you would do is, I know what I would do here is I would do this by substitution. Or you can do it by elimination method. That works as well. But what I would do is I say, well, y equals this and y equals that. Since y has to be the same in both cases, just set these two expressions equal to each other. So you have the square root of x equals 6 minus x. Okay? And back earlier in this course, we talked about square root graph, square root problems, and how to solve them. Remember, we saw we isolate the square root, and then we square both sides, and then we solve the, the resulting equation, and then check your answers. So you got to do that as well. So if you square both sides, you get x on this side equals six minus x quantity squared. It's not 36 plus x squared though. You have to square the side, so it's going to be six minus x times six minus x which is going to be 36 minus 12x plus x squared, if you FOIL that out. And that equals x. So it turns out to be that x squared minus 13x plus 36 equals 0. And I believe that does factor. It factors to x minus 9 times x minus 4, and that equals 0. So x equals 9 and x equals 4. Okay, so those are the two x's. Now if x was 9, you can find out what the y coordinate is. The square root of 9 is 3, so the y would be 3. So 9, 3 should work for the other one. So let's see if it does. If we put 9 in, 6 minus 9 is not 3. It's actually negative 3. And that means even though 9, 3 appears to work for this one, and it does, it does not work for the other one. So as you can see, we had, a, we had another, a new problem here. Sometimes when we get an answer, we make no algebraic errors. We get an answer that appears to work, but it doesn't. It really works for one of them. And you're like, well, what made that happen? Well, it's because we squared both sides. We added on an extra solution, just like it was back when we were doing the other ones. So we had to throw 9, 3 out, but let's try the 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So if you put 4 in, 6 minus 4 equals 2. It works. Put 4 in this one, square root of 4 equals 2. It works for both. 
So 4, 2 is a solution. Now let me kind of show you really quick. I'm going to sketch these graphs really fast. But this is what they look like. The square root of x looks like this. And then 6 uh, minus x looks like that. And guess what that point of our uh, uh, intersection right there is. If you're thinking 4, 2, you'd be right. So the 6 minus x looks like this. The square root of x looks like this. They cross at the ordered pair 4, 2. Now, of course, you don't have to graph it to do this, but that's kind of what's going on. I wanted to see, I wanted you to visualize what, what these two things are doing. And sometimes, like this one, you, you're not going to be able to tell me what this graph looks like. Okay, and you might the bottom one, but not this one. Now, let's look at example two. I'm going to do an example two exactly the way I did example one. Since y equals this and y equals that, I set the two sides equal to each other. So x squared minus 4 equal to 6x minus 13. And then it's quadratic, so I'll subtract 6x to the other side and add 13 over here, and that's 9. And that equals 0. And that factors to x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. So if I put 3 back in, I get 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, so 3, 5. So 3, 5 works for the top one. Let's confirm to make it work for the bottom one. So if you do 6 times 3, and that's 18, and then 18 take away 13 is 5. And you might ask, well, what happens in that case if that one didn't work? There you had a backup plan. You, this one didn't work, but this one did, so that was the solution. Well, if that did not work for the bottom equation, you would have to throw it out, and then the answer would be no solution, meaning these two graphs would not have crossed. So they do cross, though. It's at 3, 5. And so you're like, well, what does that look like? Well, this basically line and this parabola is actually tangent to each other. Uh, x squared minus 4 has a shape that looks kind of like this. And then 6x minus 13 looks like this. And they hit right there, just on the edge of it. And that point is 3, 5. Now, and I don't want to, I don't want to make you think that you're trying, you're, you're out there the grass. You don't have to do that. I do it here on my demonstration just to show you, to give you a visual of what's going on with these two graphs. And as a matter of fact, on example three, I am not going to be able to give you a visual representation of it because I don't have a clue what this graph looks like off the top of my head. But I can get around it, okay, because I don't need to know what the graph really looks like. Now, this case right here, I am going to do this equation by solve the system by substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x right here and solve for it. And like we did back in 8.1, I'm going to solve for this x and then put that back into the equations for x. It won't be pretty. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of work involved here. So you do 2x plus 3y equals 5. And so x is going to be 5 minus 3y divided by 2. That's what x is. And you take that and you put it in for this x and this x. So you get 4 times 5 minus 3y divided by 2 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 3y over 2 times y plus 9y squared equals 15. So what I did was I took the 5 minus 3y and put it in here and here and just put everything else down as it is. And I would, would it be different if you solve for y instead of x? Well, this would be the same. I mean, it would be different, but it would be solving for y instead of solving. I mean, it would be solving for x instead of solving for y. So it's the same idea, but you're solving for the other variable. You're like, what well, does it matter? No. Just pick one and go with that one. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can work this out a little bit better. So I get 4 times 5 minus 3y squared is going to be 25 minus 30y plus 9y squared over 2 squared, which is 4, which is kind of nice because the 4s are going to cancel. Okay, minus... Okay, uh, 3y, which is the same here, so it's going to be negative 3y times 5 is a negative, uh, let's see. Well, let's see, let's keep that the same. Let's see, it's going to be negative 15 
Let's make that a plus. So it'd be negative 15 uh, y. And then negative 3y times a negative 3y is a plus 9y squared, I believe, over 2. And then plus the 9y squared equals 15. And again, this force cancel, which is kind of nice. So we get 25 minus 30y plus 9y squared. Sometimes it's got to look worse before it looks better. Okay? So then this becomes 9y squared over 2 minus 15y over 2. Just broke that up into two pieces. Plus your 9y squared. All right? And it equals 15. So now what I want to do is I'm going to multiply everything times 2, both sides. You know, why is that? Because I don't like the fractions. I just don't like fractions, so I'll just multiply everything times uh, 2, and that gives me 50 minus 60y plus 18y squared plus 9y squared. That's why I multiplied it by 2, because the 2 is canceled. Minus 15y, because I multiplied it by 2, and then plus 18y squared, and it equals 30. So it's getting looking better. It's still long, but still it's beginning to look a little bit better. So that becomes, all together, you have 18, 27, you have 36, you have 45y squared. You have, uh, let's see, negative 15y and negative 60y is a negative 75y. And then you have 50, you have, well, if I move the 30 over here, then I have a minus 20 equals 0. Now, I can make this look a little bit more reasonable by dividing everything by 5. And so if I divide everything by 5, I have 9y squared minus 15y minus 4 equals 0. And I would have to, now I'm running out of room. I'm going to leave this, let this one here rest for you guys. But I think you can actually factor this and you solve for y, then get the x coordinates, and then you got to go back and put it back into both of them. So there's a little bit more work involved this one. But I, I gave you a tough one because I wanted you to see that sometimes they are not easy, okay? But most of the time they are, okay? But it, the problem itself is not hard. It's just a matter of manipulation, manipulation, manipulation. So if you're not patient with these things, you will struggle. You have to be patient. So now this is last example. Last example is four. I have 2x squared plus y equals 2, and x squared minus 2y squared plus 8 equals 0. Now, what I'm going to do here is, well, there's a couple of things I could do, okay? I could do this one by elimination, actually. So if I get 2x squared plus y equals 2, and then take this bottom equation and multiply it by 2, you'll have 2x squared minus 4y squared plus 16 equals 0. Okay? Now, if you subtract the equation, like elimination method we learned well ago in 8.1, we subtract these out, and then you get 4y squared, you will get plus y minus 16 equals 0. Now, here's the thing. You solve this one for y, and you get the answers in that, okay? When you get the answers, you have to plug that back into this y right here. When you do that, there is going to be an issue with a complex number at some point. So when you solve this one, you're going to have to, I believe, use the quadratic formula. I'm not sure. Um, let's see if I can make it factor off the top of my head. I don't think so. So y is equal to plus uh, negative b, which is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 16, all over 2 times 4. Then that becomes negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, this is 256 plus 1 is 257, over 8. Now that number itself is not bad. It's ugly, but it's not, it's not a bad number. But uh, what you have to do is you'd have to take each one of these numbers and put it back into this y right here. 
when you take both these numbers and put it back over here and divide by 2 and try to solve for x squared, you get an imaginary number. So this number in itself is not bad, but what happens is when you put it back into one of these equations and attempt to solve for x squared, you will get an imaginary number. So that's why this example 4 would be no solution. So, so in itself, the problems are not that bad as far as uh, the difficulty level and the idea. What's, what's hard about it is the manipulation. Because the idea is just where are the graphs crossing? And you learned in 8.1 that one of the two techniques we have is elimination and substitution. So substitute, when you substitute them in and solve for x, sometimes it's not so bad even on these equations. But the last two I showed you, I sh uh, you need to leave yourself lots of room. So the idea is not hard. The calculations can be maddening sometimes, and it do take and does take a while, and you have to be patient with them. And when you're trying to do this in as many on, on a whiteboard as I could, be sure you have to do the problems. I didn't want to do all the calculations because I would be here for a lot longer than what I actually am. These are already long enough. So, but anyway, that concludes 8.6. If you have any questions, you know where I'm at.